Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman, mighty visitor from the destroyed planet Krypton, who has appeared on Earth as the champion of the weak and the oppressed. Faster than a speeding bullet, stronger than a locomotive, with a physical structure never before realized by mortal men, Superman goes about among human beings as Miles Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. When we last saw him, Superman was on the trail of the Giftonelli gang, petty racketeers, who had escaped from town after capturing Lois Lane, feature writer for the Daily Planet. While Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, sped northward toward the gang's hideout with Editor White, and young Jimmy Olsen, a Daily Planet copy boy. Lois made good her escape from Donnelly's cabin in the deep woods, taking with her the evidence of Donnelly's guilt, but only to run into an even greater danger. In leaving the cabin to follow her, Donnelly and his henchman Spike accidentally knocked over a kerosene stove, and at once the flimsy wooden shack was a mass of fire. Donnelly and Spike raced for their car, leaving Lois to her fate, while tongues of flame licked hungrily toward the dry wood. As our story continues today... The racketeers are several miles from the burning cabin, headed back to the city, speeding over the rough road in their powerful black sedan. Listen. Listen, Spike. You sure that lame girl took the briefcase with her? Well, you looked for it yourself, didn't you? Yeah, it wasn't anywhere in that room. What difference does it make? If it's gone, it's gone, ain't it? Yeah, if it's gone. If it ain't, it can make a lot of difference. How? What's the matter? You that dumb? There's papers in that briefcase. And then papers tell all about our collections back in town. Who we tapped and for how much. What if somebody finds it, Chip? I'm counting on the fire to fix those papers for good. Yeah, but what if somebody gets in there to put out the fire? Don't worry. They got a fine chance of doing that. Why not? For two reasons, Spike. Number one, in another 20 minutes, the woods will be like a furnace. Number two, the road's blocked. Oh, that's what you was doing while I get out the car. If anybody takes the road back to that cabin, Spike, they'll find a big tree down, right in their way. Yeah? And if they try to move the tree, well, it'll be the last thing they ever do move. I can tell you that. Honest? How come? Never mind how come. Just believe what I'm telling you. Quite a while ago, I figured on something like this happening. I'll say that you figure all the angles, Jip. I'll say I do. What's up now? Uh, it's a blowout. It's this washboard road. Pull up, Chip. Yeah, right front shoe. We got a spare? Sure, we got a spare. Wait till I get the trunk open. Yeah, this ain't no time to get held up. How long will it take? Oh, 15 minutes, maybe more. Step on it, will you? Hey, wait. What's the matter? There's a car coming up the road. Keep low. What if they stop? No, they won't stop. Hey, Danelli, they're slowing down. They're stopping. Keep quiet. I'll handle this. Hey there, you fellow. You know this road? Spike, roll up your collar and keep your head down. Yeah. What do you want to know? Uh, how far is it? A little fall. Uh, five miles. You can't miss it. Okay. Much obliged. All right. Gee, what's that luck? What do you mean, luck? See the guy in the front seat next to the driver? No, what of it? I ain't sure, but I think it was that newspaper guy. What's his name? Uh, Clark Kent? Yeah. He didn't open his trap, but I bet it was him all right. And didn't I see a kid in the back seat? Yeah. Yeah, there was a kid in there. I don't know who the old guy driving was, but if I'm right and the other fellow was Kent, well, it's a cinch the kid was young Olsen. Gee, well, what are they doing up here? After the lane girl, of course. And she's out somewhere in those woods with a fire getting closer every minute. Well, come on, come on. Don't stand there, Gabin. Get a move on. What are we going to do? Fix this flat. That's the first thing. Then I'm going to turn right around and head back to Little Falls. What? After them? You said it. It's too good a chance. We might get to knock them all off at once. And who'd be left to tell about the racket then? Come on. Get hot with them, too. Yet. Pretty near, Jimmy. Was it five miles that fellow said, Mr. White? That's right, Kent. We've covered about four of them already. 
What's troubling me now is how we're going to locate Denali's hideout when we get there. All we know so far is that it's somewhere in Little Falls or near it. Look, Mr. White. Isn't that a gas station up ahead? Yeah, we'll pull in. That's as good a place as any to ask questions. All right. We're almost out of gas anyway. There's a man inside. He's coming out now. Evening, gentlemen. Fill her up. Well, you might as well. We don't know just how far we're going. Say, uh, Little Falls anywhere around here? Yes, sir. Sure it is. Just about a mile down the road. Keep right at the forks. Forks, mister? Yep. Left hand goes into the woods. Go in there and you stand a mighty good chance of getting stuck. Stuck? Why? Probably muddy. Oh, no, it ain't mud. It's just a mighty narrow, mean road that's blocked. Big tree down across it. How do you know? Well, a couple of city fellas went by heading for the city a while ago and they that's told funny. me. I wonder how they knew. Well, they got a cabin in there. Uh, look here. Uh, these two men, they didn't by any chance come up from the city about four or five hours ago, did they? Why, gee, mister, you must be a mind reader. What? And you're dead right. They did go through just about four or five hours ago. Only there were three of them then. I know because they stopped for cigarettes. Three of them. Kent, do you hear that? Listen, was the third person in their car a girl? Oh, now, quit your kidding. They're friends of yours. You knew them all the time. Was the third person a girl? Was it? Uh, she was. And they drove back just now without her? Yep. Guess they parked her in the cabin. Maybe they're coming back. Hey, hey, where are you going? Where's your phone? Quick. I ain't got no phone. Come back here, Kent. Look here. That was Danelli on the road. That man you stopped to ask directions of. And he's left Lois up in that cabin. We've got to get her out and warn the police. Hey, listen, I don't know what you're talking Never about. Never mind, you'll find out later. Hey, listen, wherever it is, you can't get in that cabin. I tell you the road's blocked. That's right, Mr. White, we forgot. Confound it. Mr. White, look here. We've got to separate. What do you mean, Ken? You take the car, get to the nearest phone. Uh, where is it, mister? Well, now, let's see. Uh, down to Robbins, uh, third house on the left. All right, you phone the police, Mr. White. Tell them to watch all roads back to the city. Well, Ken, what are you going to do? I'm going up the road into the woods. Even if a car can't get through, maybe a man can. I'll go with you, Mr. Ken. No, you stay here, Jimmy. I'll take him with me. No, he'd better stay right here, Mr. White. What's the idea? Jimmy, you watch the road. Keep your eye out for Danelli's car, just in case he takes it into his head to come back again. Mr. Kent, what will I do if he does come? Well, uh, let's see. Hey, you. Uh, have you got a gun? Uh, sure, I've got a gun, only I ain't going to let Never you... Never mind that. Those two men who own that cabin are crooks and racketeers. What's that? You heard me. Now, if that car comes back again while I'm up the road toward the camp, fire your gun three times. Get it? I get it, Mr. Kent. So long, Mr. White. Oh, Kent, when I've made that phone call, I'll come right back. So will I, Mr. White. Meanwhile, I'll see if that tree can be cleared off the road. I'll hurry all I can. <sighs> now then, I'll run a few steps to get out of sight. Oh, poor Lois. If they're holding her in that cabin, but not for long. Well, do we know where she is? Ah, uh, this ought to do it. They can't see me from the gas station. If I know anything at all, Danelli's blocked the road on purpose. But he can't block Superman. Up! Up! Leaping into the air, Superman streaks over the darkness of the pine woods, following the dim ribbon of the dirt road below. An odor of smoke is in the night wind, but he pays no heed to that. On through the darkness, then sharply down toward the impassable barrier of a huge fallen tree, blocking off all entrance to the cabin. There. What's that? Looks like a tree. It is. Down right across the road. Well, it shouldn't take us too long to get rid of that. Down. Down. There. Now then, a little hard to get at to work in closer toward the trunk. Uh -huh. Full-grown pine, 70 feet long if it's an inch, and three feet thick. Must weigh eight or nine tons. Well, I wonder how far I can throw this tree, like hurling a javelin. What's this? It's a wire. This thing's wired down. That's funny. Well, score one for Danelli. Wired that tree to a blasting charge. Blew up right in my face. Anybody else would have been shattered to bits. Good thing dynamite can't hurt me. But maybe it wasn't so good for Danelli. That blast blew the tree right off the road. If I can't get to the cabin now, I... Three shots. That means trouble back at the gas station. Something's happened. And here comes a car. Can't be Danelli. They never make a row like that. Must be the police. 
Well, whoever it is, all they'll find when they get here is Clark Kent. Come to think of it, I'd better go to meet them. Just in case Danelli's planted any more surprises. Hey, hold it! What's the matter? Kent, great Scott man. That explosion. Mr. White, how did you hear it? How did you get here? Well, I was on my way back after making the phone call. What happened? Danelli's gang left a charge of blasting powder under the fallen tree. It just went off. And are you all right? Is Jimmy all right? Jimmy? Jimmy's back at the gas station. No, no, he's not. The man said he went after you. But he didn't. I told him to stay there. I know, I know what you told him. But the man said he followed you anyway. If he was in that blast... Mr. White, it's not possible. I would have seen him. He must be in the woods. Jimmy! Jimmy Olsen! Jimmy! Jimmy! Jimmy Olsen! Jimmy, where are you? Jimmy! Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Frantic shouts and calls go off into the darkness of the forest. And only mocking echoes come faintly back. Jimmy has vanished in the woods. And meanwhile, stronger and stronger on the night wind, the odor of burning brush comes drifting from the direction of the cabin. Jimmy is gone. Lois is gone. And somewhere behind, creeping up through the night, Danelli and Spike are returning to see what Kent and White have found. The thrilling climax is not far off. Tune in next time and follow the exciting, thrill-packed story of Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.